The sewing machine has a major impact on everyday life, whether you think so or not. From the shoes you wear to your clothes, belts, and purse, hats, and so much more. Your wardrobe would not be the same without the invention of the sewing machine. Eli Howe is the inventor of the sewing machine. He created the sewing machine in 1845. And his inventions have made a very big impact on this world. If it was not for Howe's invention, people would still be sewing by hand. According to Elias Howe's biography on biography.yourdictionary.com, Howe began trying to build a workable sewing machine in 1844. Many people before Howe tried to make a sewing machine, but had failed to make it work. One key to his success was at the placement of the eye of the needle near the point rather than at the opposite end as in a regular needle. By April 1845, Howe had a working sewing machine. In 1846, Howe went to Washington to exhibit the machine at a fair. Crowds were said that he had gathered to see the machine that would free women from hand sewing garments. He tried to sell the machine for $300, but had no luck doing so. Alex Ashcroft states in his article, Elias Howe, Inventor of the Sewing Machine, that it was just too expensive for people to gamble on, at a time when the average wage was between $5 to $10 a week. At this rate, the sewing machine would cost a year's wage for most people. In September 1846, Howe had his sewing machine happen, but he had to prove his machine worth first. According to Asgard's article, Elias set up a large demonstration at the Quincy Clothing Company, where he sat at his machine for 14 days, sewing every piece of clothing brought to him. The tailors were said, had said to brought him the worst fabrics, but he sewed them all. He sewed against the best and fastest seamstress, and bets were wagered, and he beat them all. Here is a demonstration of how at the Quincy Clothing Company, where he is competing against the seamstress on how fast his sewing machine actually can sew. In October 1846, Howe sailed to England to try his hand at selling his machine there. He found a buyer named William Frederick Thomas, who was a manufacturer of corsets, umbrellas, and shoes. Thomas brought the machine and the rights to it for 250 pounds. Here is an actual picture of the machine that Thomas bought and patented in England in 1846. If you would like to visit this machine here and see it in real life, you may go to London and go to the Science Museum where it is displayed at. Thomas hired Howe to stay in England to make modifications to his machine that would allow for the construction of corsets and underbrows. Howe returned to America in 1849 to discover that the market of sewing machine was taking off. Isaac Sr. and several others entered the sewing machine manufacturing market while Howe was in England. None of them checked to see if they were inferring on any patent. They were. Elias had patent for his needles and two thread lock stitches shuttled, and the new machine infringed on these patents. Elias Howe filed a lawsuit in 1849 and finally ended in 1854, which awarded Howe a license fee for each machine produced by his arrivals, and Howe received as much as $4,000 a week in royalties. In the 1850s, the sewing machine became a major trade item, and the sewing machine sales continued to grow for decades. Elias Howe's invention changed the world of manufacturing all kinds of garments, shoes, and household linings, and the sewing machine improved the quality of life for millions of people.